Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the New News. I'm Augusta McDonald and for Diane Parker. Our top story today, Billings Police Chief Rich St. John released more details about the officer-involved shooting of a man carrying a machete downtown on Tuesday. That officer is now on administrative leave, which is department policy. MTN's Haley Monaco has more on what police say happened and what witnesses saw. This is the scene where Billings police officers surrounded a man with a machete in downtown Billings. After officers tried to negotiate with the man for seven minutes, they did tase him. That taser at one point became not effective and an officer shot the man at close range. And he was yelling. He was obviously very uh, beside himself and angry. It's a scene that drew a lot of attention. A crowd of onlookers could only watch as a tense Tuesday afternoon turned deadly right across the street from the first interstate tower. His body was writhing. It was obvious that he had been effectively tased. David Dietrich, a Billings lawyer, was among the many to bear witness to what happened as Billings police officers tased a man with a machete watching as he dropped to the ground. Officers then quickly surrounded him, they say, to handcuff him. It is at this point Billings Police Chief Rich St. John says the taser stopped working. Based on the proximity of officers and the threat posed from the machete, Officer Zach Wallace, an 11-year veteran of the police department, fired five rounds from his patrol rifle, striking the subject in the torso. Officer Zach Wallace was within just a few feet of the man who has not yet been identified when he fired five shots, a decision the police chief defended during a Tuesday press conference. And if there was time, and if there was distance, and if it was safe to do so, um, trying another taser would have been appropriate or some other less lethal. St. John says police wanted to contain the situation, not wanting the man to run through downtown or into a crowded building in the middle of the afternoon. The call was this individual menacing uh, citizens, pedestrians with a machete. And unfortunately, um, you know, the, the decedent did not comply and reached for his weapon. And again, unfortunately, we have a tragic ending to this. No, no question about it. This was a threatening situation. But David Dietrich and some others who were watching questioned that response. There didn't appear to be any brandishing of the, of the machete or even an attempt by him to access it in the sheath, which is where it was when he got tased. The five gunshots were fired four seconds after the man falls to the ground from being tased. My God, I mean, what a level of force used under these circumstances. I didn't even know he was dead until after because I had no idea that that level of force was needed to subdue him because of the fact that he'd been very effectively tased. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. And good Thursday afternoon, everyone. Nothing says the middle of spring in Montana like being in the middle of a winter-like storm. We have areas of wind, rain, snow, and much cooler than average temperatures right now. We already have some areas of snow around Cutbank, rain and snow mixes around Haver. Also some light snow around Great Falls, approaching Helena from the north. We also have some more areas of snow around Lewistown, Glasgow. So rain and snow mixes. Also areas of rain around Glendive and Miles City. And so there's some more rain that's approaching the Billings area from the northwest fairly rapidly. Nothing may be very heavy, but it is moving into our area all the way into parts of Bighorn County as well as Rosebud County, too. So the temperatures do not resemble early May for much of the country, but we have this in Montana, Wyoming. I'm going to let you know what else is coming in just a few minutes. There's concern this morning that new federal rules regarding pollution could force the coal-fired power plant in Coal Strip to shut down. The Environmental Protection Agency is setting strict standards for fossil fuel plants releasing carbon dioxide. The rules force plants to cut back on the release of metals like mercury that enter the air as neurotoxins during coal burning. Experts say these toxins cause illness and worsen mortality rates, but Montana congressional leaders told the EPA Coal Strip would not be able to invest the money necessary to meet the new standards. He also acknowledged it will take a hundred hundreds of millions of dollars to meet the standards and this is a power plant with a public depreciation date of 2042. You and I both know there's no way they make hundreds of millions of dollars in investment in a power plant that that has that depreciation date. Along with those particulate emissions those particles the small particles get the importance of them is they get inhaled deep into the lungs where they can cause lung damage. 
During a hearing last week, EPA Administrator Michael Regan told Montana Representative Ryan Zinke the agency's analysis shows Colstrip has the ability to comply with the mercury standards. Harrison Public School Superintendent and Principal Cheryl Allen made an appearance in Madison County Justice Court this week to enter a plea of not guilty. She faces a misdemeanor charge of obstructing a peace officer. Allen is a Republican candidate for the Montana Office of Public Instruction Superintendent. She's accused of preventing an agent from the Montana Department of Criminal Investigation and a Madison County Sheriff's Office captain from interviewing students. The officers suspected the students were victims of a crime committed by a former teacher. Harrison Public Schools currently has a job listing for the role of superintendent. Her next court hearing is scheduled for July. Montana Department of Criminal Investigation and the Madison County Sheriff's Office say they're continuing to investigate a former teacher. On Monday night, a driver crashed a semi-truck and plunged down a 100-foot cliff on Interstate 90 between Whitehall and Butte. Check out these scary photos. Responders say the truck hit a guardrail and a cab separated from the frame, then rolled down the cliff. Rescuers had to navigate large boulders, steep terrain, darkness, and a creek at the bottom of that cliff. The driver was transported by helicopter to St. James Hospital and is currently listed in stable condition. And in campaign news this morning, with Congressman Matt Rosendale not seeking another term in the U.S. House, a crowded field of 12 candidates has formed for the seat he's leaving open. Over the coming weeks, we will introduce you to each of those candidates you'll see on your ballots for the primaries in June. But new this morning, I sit down with Farm 406 pharmacy owner Kyle Austin. He's stepping onto the political field once again to vie for the open Eastern Congressional District seat and says he'll operate differently than current representative Matt Rosendale. I'm not a fan of Matt Rosendale. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to run against him in the first place. Austin lost to Rosendale in the 2022 Eastern District Republican primary. Austin is originally from Haver, but opened Farm 406 in Billings during the pandemic. He says he will lean on his experience farming in Haver to tackle what he believes will be one of the first challenges for the next representative. The farm bill is huge. Um, Congress has a very big impact on the farm bill. The last congressional uh, representatives failed to do a new farm bill, and so that's going to be a big challenge for whoever's elected. He wants to bring new business to the state to boost the economy and offset the property tax burden on homeowners. As a congressman, I would like to bring in a fertilizer plant up in the Sydney area, eastern Montana, where we can start making our own fertilizer for the farmers. We're going to create that economic stability, create the jobs. He also proposes increasing gaming and entertainment opportunities in certain cities and placing toll booths at the state border. Anybody that is not a state resident coming into our state that has an impact on our economic, our economy here, they pay a toll fee to come in to enjoy our state parks and, and our, our culture here. Austin says when it comes to reproductive rights, he doesn't want to see abortion used as a form of birth control, but says it should be available in some circumstances. There should be some guidance from the federal level that, um, that prevents one extreme to the other. And so should abortion be illegal in certain circumstances? Yes. Okay, now the state should create the criteria on who, when, where, and then like I mentioned, create that database to where people are put in a database so they can be tracked and criminalized if necessary.